Hi, good day, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, my name is Alex. I am Leaders National Trainer, and I look forward to going through this webinar with everyone today. Uh, as I keep saying in every webinar that I do, if you've attended any one of my previous ones, um, I'm a massive Ubiquity fanboy and I love talking about their products. Uh, today, specifically, we're going to be looking at the Protect product range. Um, this will be both a uh, overview of the product itself as well as a quick technical, um, I wouldn't say it's a deep dive, but just an overview of the, the setup process on these products. Um, and you can see how quick and fast and easy it is to, to deploy their products in the field if you haven't done it already. Um, it's a really quick webinar today, only 30 minutes long. Uh, questions are most welcome and encouraged. Um, we do also have a prize draw right at the end of this as well. Um, if you uh, attended, you are eligible for the prize draw. So um, please do stick around for that as well. Joining with me today is Chris Sutherland, who is the product manager for Ubiquity Within Leader. Um, he will also be assisting me with answering some of your questions. So please do feel free to raise them through as we progress through the training. Um, with that said, we can delve straight into it. So the first thing we need to just take a look at is the protect side of Ubiquity. So I think a lot of you would be familiar with the networking side of it, which is essentially where you would set up and manage the switches, access points, et cetera, which to a lot of you would be your burden by the products. Um, an often overlooked part of Ubiquity is the security side of it. Um, and I think we can all agree that uh, your security is becoming a very critical part to most businesses and the one big benefit that we have through Ubiquity that you lack in other brands is that it is integrated to the same platform and same systems that are running your network side of things as well. Um, this is quite a big advantage if you think about traditional network deployments and traditional network management, where you would have a separate interface for your switches and a separate interface for all of your routers, etc. With Ubiquity, we combine this all into one thing and our uh, IP cameras are essentially IP based already, so it makes it nice and easy to manage everything through one brand um, and through one central interface. Uh, Ubiquity is really driving this forward um, and we're seeing a lot more um, brands starting to adopt this methodology um, of trying to combine things, but Ubiquity are really first to market with that and really, really good at doing it as well. Um, I always laugh when I look at the traditional CCTV products that we used to work on. Uh, I think a lot of you would know and remember uh, a lot of the YouTube videos that you've seen before where people are trying to export video footage from a NVR, DVR, and it's actually easier to just record the screen than it is to uh, actually get the, the high-res version of the um, of the video footage. With, with Ubiquity, essentially they completely eliminate this and we'll see this as we go through uh, the timelines and through the review of the video footage, etc. Uh, navigation is really simple. Um, it's really simple to get this up and running, both from an operator's point of view um, and from an administrator's point of view as well. Um, and again, because everything's centrally managed, it's super easy for you to get started. One of the things that I'll also just quickly mention, and I think this is a part of uh, Ubiquity's uh, tool sets, which people don't often associate with uh, surveillance or security, um, and that is Ubiquity's resource calculator. I highly encourage everyone to take a look at this as well. The resource calculator is an extremely important tool specifically for the protect side of things and the security cameras, um, because we need to take into account uh, how many cameras we can have on a device, on a on a UDM or something similar. So unlike traditional CCTV brands where you just have a camera component and just the NVR component, Ubiquity do things a bit differently, as I said, uh, where we have the networking side of things and potentially also access control and even uh, VoIP services as part of one device. And that is through the Ubiquity Dream Machines or the UDMs. Because that device is filling more than one role, it's not just an NVR, uh, it can be a little bit more difficult to understand what the uh, processor requirements are and what the system resource requirements are, depending on the number of cameras that you have set up. For that reason, the resource calculator is an extremely valuable tool, as I can very easily, as you can see, they just drag the number of cameras that I want, and I can increase the number of 4K cameras as well as I want. Um, and essentially, I can manage my entire system and get a quick overview of how many devices I can actually have running on my uh, device. Uh, of course, you do still have the option to go for traditional NVR as well. Um, and Ubiquity do provide uh, NVRs, and we'll 
we'll take a look at that in a second as well. But good recommendation, and it's a free tool to use on Ubiquiti's website. Uh, you can simply go to consoles, the link in the uh, video there. Um, and if you are looking to get this link afterwards, the uh, webinar will be recorded and sent out to you as well, just as an FYI. With that, we can quickly take a look at the actual product. So unlike other CCC brands, there's not a million different flavors of the same product. Uh, with a lot of traditional CCTV brands or surveillance brands, uh, you'll see they have 50 different bullet types with different resolutions and uh, minute differences between the models. Ubiquity tried to streamline this to only provide core products. In other words, the products that they know that resellers sell the most of and these products align to specific verticals. In other words, they are designed for a specific use case in mind. Um, they do have a fairly broad range of products available, but it's again, it's slimmed down to the core components of what people really need. So uh, a lot of the traditional deployments include your, for example, your bullet style cameras. Uh, there is a couple more bullet cameras available, um, but essentially there's, um, you can essentially go from 1080p all the way up to 4K, depending on what your requirements are. Uh, you can also go for the one that's shown on screen there, that's Pro, which actually has three times optical zoom capabilities as well. And again, a lot of these products are driven very much by use case, so it depends on where you're going to be deploying them. Uh, Ubiquity do a pan tilt zoom camera as well, or PTZ camera, with up to 22 times optical zoom. Uh, it's a, quite a big monster. If you've attended the Leader Expo, you would have seen this there as well. Um, really cool device for uh, extreme surveillance purposes. If you need to get more range uh, and visibility out of a specific area, uh, rural areas, etc., are ideal for PTZ cameras. They also do the traditional dome style cameras, which are meant to go indoors and against walls or ceilings. Um, and really these are designed to provide you with an overview of an area um, while focusing in on specific key points. Um, one of the call out products, and I'm gonna take a little bit of a deep dive into it as well, is the AI360. Um, we are really promoting the AI360 purely because it's a good way for both resellers and for um, in customers to save money. Essentially, the AI360 is an awesome way for you to get an overview of a large area and have 360 degree coverage, as the name would imply. We'll see that in a second as well. And then something which is immensely popular is the G4 instance. Um, so essentially, these are little Wi-Fi cameras. So the rest of the cameras that we've just looked at all mean to be powered and connected through normal Ethernet connectivity, whereas the G4 instance are uh, designed to work by Wi-Fi primarily. So they're powered by USB-C, uh, really simple to deploy pretty much anywhere you want, provided you have wireless coverage. I mean, it eliminates that need for you to put down hardwired Ethernet cable. Uh, high resolution as well, uh, five megapixel up to 2K uh, resolution. So really, really good clear images. And then of course, the very popular uh, G3 flexes as well, um, which are uh, flexible in terms of how they can be mounted and where they can be mounted, etc. And we'll take a little bit more of a deep dive into all of these as well. Another part of the protect range or the security range that people don't often associate with the, the protect side of things is Ubiquiti's doorbells. So Ubiquiti are uh, essentially promoting their own uh, range of doorbells. So these would compete with the likes of Ring, etc. But these are more focused towards businesses instead of residential. Um, so these also are part of the same Protect app. So if you're looking to get an overview of all your different cameras, it's nice and easy because it means your front door is included as part of the site picture. Um, and you can get an overview of all of your surveillance products as well as your front door with your uh, doorbells as well. So different versions there, depending on what your requirements are. Um, and essentially they are uh, meant to be mounted on front doors for both businesses and for uh, residential deployments, but primarily meant for business style deployments. And then something which is very new to Ubiquity as well is the little protect sensor. I'm pretty sure a lot of you wouldn't have seen this around yet. Um, and we're also going to be taking a look at some of the additional Ubiquity products, which are uh, still in early access, but we, we can take a sneak peek of them uh, in a second as well. So the Protect sensor, essentially this is a little battery powered smart sensor uh, that's meant to do stuff like uh, motion detection. Um, it can pick up lighting. It can pick up environmental changes. 
Um, and it can even pick up stuff like humidity and water levels. So for water level detection, you do need an additional sensor on top of this, but essentially this is a little PIR that's battery powered and it uses Bluetooth low energy, so BTLE, um, in order to connect to an access point. Uh, it does need to connect to a couple of very specific access points. So it's the U6 range only, and it's the Lite Pro and LR versions. Um, but essentially this is a passive infrared it can do um, PIR sensing up to five meters away from it, motion detection. Um, and this is a good way to trigger uh, events and alerts, especially within residential or business deployments, uh, where your PIRs are typically now part of a disjointed system, something like your traditional alarm panel or something like that. So I think this is long overdue. I've been <laughs> really eagerly awaiting uh, PIR sensors that can integrate to the rest of my network. And this is really the, the way to go. Um, I'm excited to see where this technology takes us in future. Still very, very new, as I said, um, but it's an awesome product to take a look at. And it is on the Ubiquiti sign as well as on the Leader Dealer Shop now as well. We do actually have stock of them as well. As I alluded to before, Ubiquiti do have the NVRs still available as well. Um, I can already hear a lot of you asking, where would I use a NVR as opposed to something like a Dream Machine? And why would I go for a dedicated piece of hardware as opposed to going for a Dream Machine, which can do everything? Uh, the answer lays in the capabilities. So a NVR, because it's a standalone device, essentially the processing power that's on that device is dedicated purely to the protect side of things. It's meant for the surveillance cameras, et cetera. As a result of that, you do get the capability to have a lot more cameras on your system. And then the big thing as well is, you do get the ability to expand your storage capabilities. If we have surveillance environments where we are trying to increase the retention of video footage, then essentially we do need to have more hard drive bays. The UDM can only take one hard drive bay, whereas the NVRs, depending on the model, can do either four or seven hard drive bays. Um, you can stick, for example, uh, 18 terabyte drives into that to increase your, your storage capacity, uh, depending on how long you want to retain that data for. And of course, again, this means you get to have more cameras on your system. So the AI 360, as the name implies, and I talked about earlier, it's designed to give you a 360 degree field of view. Uh, so instead of just taking a look at the specs, we'll look at the different use cases for this. Um, and essentially the, the primary place we see this is in areas where you're looking to have a large overview of an area um, and then still retain the capabilities to zoom into and zoom out of specific scenes while recording everything. A uh, big problem with traditional pan tilt zoom cameras is that if you're facing one direction, you lose everything in the direction behind you. Uh, with the 360 degree cameras, essentially, you still retain that ability. So we see this deployed a lot in offices, restaurants, hotels, schools, uh, pretty much any place you can think of that needs a wide area of coverage. The big thing and the main reason we're pushing this so heavily is because you have the ability to replace multiple cameras with a single device. And it's a low profile as well, which means it's unobtrusive. You can easily mount this to a ceiling and you can have a awesome overview of a very large coverage area. So we've seen this replace up to four or six cameras um, from one single device. It's a really, really cool tool uh, to deploy for customers and a good way for them to save money as well. And of course, the image on this would be this traditional fisheye shape, but Ubiquiti have taken this a step further and you can actually uh, de-warp this image as well. And as you can see in the video, um, essentially it's zooming into the scene. Um, I can pan and tilt this around into the area that I want to focus on. And the most impressive part is that you can do this both live and after the fact. Um, so if you've looking at all your, if you're reviewing video footage after an event's occurred, you can still pan and tilt around exactly as you're seeing it. You can pause the video, still pan and tilt around. So awesome way to cover large areas. With that said, we can quickly take a look at uh, how the protect side of things are set up and managed. Uh, we have a very streamlined deployment here um, and I'll be talking you through what we've done to set this up. So. In my deployment, I've just got the Dream Machine Special Edition. I've got an AI360, as well as a little UVC camera that I've got connected up there as well. For this, we're going to go to the Protect app, which is the primary place through which you will 
see all of your video uh, footage and manage all of your cameras. So you can see I've got my little UDM setup there. This is the overview page. Essentially, we just get a very quick overview of the different scenes. Uh, we're gonna take a deep dive into that in a sec. Excuse the images which are upside down. That was while I was doing a quick test run yesterday. Um, so we're gonna quickly first take a look at the UDM. Uh, very cool. We can at a glance see what our storage uh, looks like. So we can see how many cameras we have up and running, if they're 1080p or 4K. Uh, we can add um, additional drives in, as you can see, uh, although Leader does, of course, sell these drives as well. And we can at a glance see the different uh, parameters of this device. So you can see the operating temperature, whether I need to provide air conditioning in the room. And we can also see the utilization. So how much of memory is in use, how much of the CPU is in use, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So very cool to see that at a very quick glance. And then we have two cameras connected up to this, the AI360, which I was talking about. I'm going to quickly open this up and there we go. You've got a picture of me and I'm going to <laughs> quickly wave to you guys there and I'm going to de-warp this image or warp this image actually. So you'll see this is a very wide uh, region of coverage. And then of course you can de-warp this as well to zoom into a specific scene. If you want more info on this device, we did a, a webinar on that not so long ago. I think it's last week. Uh, please do have a look out for that as well. And then I've got a traditional G3 dome here, which I'm just using for uh, testing purposes. So I can show you guys uh, the uh, video footage and as well as the settings uh, that we can actually apply on these devices. Um, so really straightforward to manage this. If you're used to the Ubiquiti ecosystem, you'll feel right at home here and you'll see the different things that you can do. Um, you'll see I've taken a screenshot there, just a very quick screenshot opened up directly on my desktop. Uh, nice and easy for me to set up and change anything if I want to there. And I can also have access to the settings directly from here. So most of the settings are extremely self-explanatory, like you've seen microphone there. I can adjust contrast, the hue, saturation, sharpness. Uh, I can adjust the exposure modes um, and I can change the orientation as well. I've just got mine mounted on top of a shelf here. So <laughs> not, not the best scene, but just as a quick overview of uh, how you can do this, you can of course adjust the infrared as well. And these devices do have built-in IR LEDs, uh, this little G3 dome, like I said before. And in this one, it also de-warps the image to make it a more flat image because it's got a very wide field of view. And then something which is incredibly important for a very um, contrasting environments or environments with a lot of backlighting, uh, this device does also support WDR capabilities. And essentially I'm just adjusting the level of WDR that is applied to this device right now. So it would be more applicable to places where you have, let's say a window behind you, where you wanna have a good resolution image for both the stuff indoors as well as outdoors. That's really what WDR is designed for. I can adjust my detections as well, and I can set up my detection mode, so I can uh, adjust where or how this uh, gets recorded, if the video should a video footage should be recorded or not, and essentially I have full control over the recording mode. Um, I can take this a step further, and I can say motion detection is turned on or off. Uh, I can adjust how long or how short after the uh, event has occurred, it should include video footage. So if someone has jumped over the wall, you want to see a couple of seconds before the motion is triggered so you can see what has led to that event. Um, I can also do uh, motion zones. So I can say that it should only pick up motion in a specific area. Uh, in this instance, what I'm doing is I am just highlighting the door here and I can say, I only wanna pick up motion that will occur in that specific space um, and everything else will essentially be ignored. I can also play with the sensitivity there. I can again take this another step further and I can apply a privacy zone as well. So in this instance, I can say, I don't want the other door that is visible there. I don't want anything that goes into or out of that to be recorded or shown in my video footage. And I'm essentially creating a little uh, exclusion zone here, which I can apply. As soon as I've done that, it actually blacks out that part of the image and you'll see that as I uh, go to the live view as well. So I'll quickly go to the live view and you'll see it's got that black bar drawn in there. So that part of the video footage is actually excluded. And when you export it, it's going to be excluded as well, which means we have no visibility on that. That's important if you're looking at environments where you're not allowed to record certain areas, private areas, um, essentially the privacy zones are designed for that. I can assign my device to a group as well if I wanna apply the settings in bulk. 
Um, and I can also uh, do stuff like enable or disable the microphone on a permanent basis if, for example, you don't want to record the audio. Um, of course, a very important thing here is to show time as well. You see this a lot as a requirement for evidentiary purposes. Um, and I can also output a uh, RTSP stream from this camera as well. So these cameras do not support OnViv. They are not compatible with a traditional NVR like a Hikvision NVR or something like that. Uh, but you do have RTSP stream capabilities from them. So this is the live view section. As you can see, I can very easily navigate through this. Um, and you'll see that the video footage is actually excluding that portion as I'm waving my hand in front of that. So it's actually not showing that, and it's actually not recording that as well. So you don't have to worry about uh, access to that accidentally. And again, super easy for me to view all of this. I can get a very quick overview of what the different scenes are. Uh, I can also do playback. And this is probably the most powerful part of Ubiquity as well, is I can do playback uh, at a very quick glance. Uh, a lot of the traditional CCTV systems you would struggle to go back over multiple days and see the different events, etc. cetera. Uh, whereas with this, it's super easy for me to do it either on a detection level or on a timeline view. So I'm just looking at the little G3 dome here. Um, if I look at the AR360, I haven't set up motion recording on this. Um, but essentially, this is a nice, quick waterfall view. And again, you can do this through a mobile device as well. And to export this is extremely easy, um, unlike you would have in a traditional CCTV system. You can do this at a glance, and you can see how quickly I can scroll through the video footage there. So awesome tool that's built straight into this. Uh, these are just a quick overview of the detections, the various detections which have happened. And I can go to the insights as well. So insights here is more aimed towards the AI360, where I can do stuff like pick up um, people or cars uh, with the little G3 domes. Essentially, all I can pick up is motion, and I can draw a little heat, heat map of where the most motion is as well. So this is on the AI360, and if there were any vehicle or person detections, it would essentially alert me of how many times a vehicle or person has been identified in a specific area. I can, of course, create different administrator accounts as well or user accounts for this, and I can get a very quick glance of what is happening on my security system. I can filter this to a specific date range as well so I can see if a camera's firmware has been applied or any changes has been made. In terms of the setup, it's incredibly easy. Adoption happens the same way you would adopt an access point. Um, I can, for example, change how long I want the data to be retained for, or the video footage to be retained for. Um, of course, if you need more than um, a couple of days worth of footage, you do need to have a fair bit of storage uh, on these devices. Uh, here, I'm just quickly creating a device group. Um, and in these device groups, it allows me to apply any setting that I want, but I apply it to all of the devices in that group. I can, of course, export the video configuration, or sorry, the, the uh, configuration for this device. Um, and I can import that to another site as well if I want to, or restore it at a later stage. And of course, I have a lot of flexibility around how that's set up. Really, that's it from the setup point of view. It's extremely easy. The one thing that is important to me as well is just notifications. So through this, you'll see we have a level of notification where we can switch on uh, certain push notifications or certain email notifications, depending on the activity type. Uh, there's a lot of granular control around this, and you can de determine uh, which cameras and which events should trigger uh, what type of alert. So very cool, you can do this on a time-based schedule as well, and I can really drill down into this. So on the AI360 here, it can trigger a push notification if a person is detected, uh, or it can send me an email or something like that. So extremely powerful, but again, very easy. Uh, if you're used to traditional CCTV systems, this is such a departure from that, whereas there's not a million different settings that have to be configured. Everything is super easy from one interface. So from the setup side of things, really straightforward. Um, I, there's not much more that I can go through there. One thing that I will also just quickly recommend is taking a look at Ubiquiti's Design Center. This is not just something that is available for the access points, although that is what it's primarily built for. With this, you can import, for example, a floor plan, and you can map out the floor plan with both your access points and your security products as well. And it will even take it a step further, and it will give you a, 
Uh, what it leaves is the field of view for that camera as well. So you can go to your customer with a piece of paper in hand and say, this is the areas we're looking to cover. And then you'll do a double whammy by including the access points in there as well. And you'll say, we can give you wireless coverage. Uh, so it's an awesome tool for that. Highly recommend checking this out. Again, free of charge on Ubiquiti's website. You guys are more than welcome to check that out. And you can see in this instance, the field of views as well as the access points which are set up in this environment. A little sneak peek here, it's something that is coming from Ubiquity. So this is still an early access, but Ubiquity have what they call the new AI Theta or Theta. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, essentially what they've done is they've analyzed the traditional camera and they've decided to remove the body from the lens. The big problem with traditional CCTV is that it's obtrusive. It doesn't look good in hotels and places like that. With the Theta or Theta, uh, it's got an extremely small footprint. It's only, uh, I think it's 2.2 uh, millimeters or 22 millimeters. I forget, oh, there we go, 22 millimeters in size. Uh, it's a tiny little footprint. Uh, and essentially it scales that device down while still giving you an extremely wide field of view um, and an awesome area of coverage. So like I said, early access product right now, um, this is a, U a Ubiquiti YouTube video. So you guys are welcome to check this out for a little bit more detail as well. Um, and this should be coming from Ubiquiti shortly. Another thing which is coming is the Ubiquity's new, uh, it's, a, it's the AI DSLR. And I thought this was a little bit of a meme product when it came out for the first time, uh, but essentially it's a, it's a good idea. Uh, what they're doing is they're taking a DSLR lens and they are mounting this to the front of a traditional CCTV or surveillance camera. The idea behind this is to give you a one, a, a much clearer picture because these lenses are specialized, they are, um, extremely detailed uh, and a very high quality, as you can see zooming into the image here. And that's the core purpose of this is to have a lens that can do uh, a wider, or sorry, a more in-depth zoom level. Uh, so you can zoom into an image much more. So really cool products coming from them as well. There's also an additional uh, whole bunch of new products coming from Ubiquity. Um, if you haven't registered already, I highly encourage you to check out Ubiquity's early access store. Uh, the early access store is only applicable to the US and the UK, but it is a good way to see which products are coming from Ubiquity. Uh, with that said, if this was interesting to you and if you would like any additional info um, or look at any of the other products coming up, I highly encourage you guys to check out Lead Academy and register for the up and coming webinars. Uh, we typically list out the entire year's webinars um, or at least six months webinars uh, that are coming up as well. Highly encourage you guys to check that out. And of course, we do still have Ubiquity training available as well, although it's more focused towards the uh, wireless side of things, both indoor and outdoor wireless. We do have training coming up uh, for the rest of next year as well, 2023. So uh, hopefully we can see you all in those classes. And to get to this page, it's very simple. It's leader-academy.com.au. I know it's a bit of a rush. It's 20 min 28 minutes in. Uh, so <laughs> thank you guys very much for uh, taking the time to sit through that. Um, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions, so please feel free to post them through now and we'll do our best to answer them. And with that, we'll do the Q&A and then straight after that, we'll do the prize draw as well. So please feel free to post through your questions now if you have any. Awfully quiet. Ah, there we go. <laughs> uh, I may have missed it. Uh, so I've got a question here. Uh, I may have missed it, but will the chime be made available in Australia? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Chris, do you have any info on that? Unfortunately, we don't have an ETA on that one. The chime is available for us to purchase, but unfortunately only with a US or EU plug at the moment, which makes it somewhat illegal. Um, so we're just waiting for them to do some kind of retooling, which will allow them to actually generate one with an AU plug ready to go. Uh, no ETA on that at the moment, but I assume it's gonna be Q1 next year. Please don't hold me to that, uh, but we're really hoping that that is the case. Awesome. Another question here from Tariq. Can motion sensors trigger external applications or APIs? So I'm assuming that's the ubiquity motion sensor that you're talking about. I can um, kind of interject here. Mr. Chris, you can keep me honest. Um, but essentially uh, the answer to that would be no. Um, it's, it's meant to work in the ubiquity ecosystem. Uh, so it can trigger alerts within the ubiquity ecosystem, but it doesn't have an external API to trigger anything else uh, in any other systems. Correct, yeah. So it's it's mainly designed to activate camera recordings or, as you mentioned, trigger alerts to let you know that something's happened. Uh, but there's no way to call that info out of the Ubiquiti ecosystem. They, they keep that within, uh, within their systems. 
And then there's an excellent product here for the, uh, sorry, an excellent question here for the product manager. Uh, when will the stock be available for the products you have presented? Um, I think we do have a fair amount of the stock on hand already. Um, I know the sensors are on stock and a couple of the cameras on stock, but uh, Mr. Chris, maybe you can expand on that. Yep, you're 100% right. So the sensors are very new to us and they just landed last week. Um, so they're available in New South Wales and Victoria warehouses at the moment and the rest of the states will have their stock very soon. Uh, so I really urge you to grab one of those. They're very, very cool little devices as Alex highlighted. Uh, in terms of cameras, we've actually got quite a few cameras on hand at the moment, including G4 Bullets, G4 Pros, uh, the AI360 that uh, that Alex mentioned. Uh, there's quite a few uh, different devices available and the, the G4 Instant. So we may not have the entire range. We're waiting for a few bits and bobs like the uh, G4 domes and that kind of thing, uh, but we do still have quite a few cameras in stock. The early access ones, however, those typically take about four to five months for, for Ubiquiti to actually release them into the market. So we'll probably see things like the, that really cool Theta or Theta camera, probably again towards the end of Q1 next year, maybe a little bit afterwards, uh, but it'll definitely be in the, in the next couple of months. Awesome. Another question here, will the Doorbell Pro we saw be available soon? Um, I think the, the first round has come and gone already, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Mr. Chris, not me not the pros, no. So we, oh, we've got the, the regular doorbells uh, that are coming in you know, fairly often. The pros, we haven't received any of our back order stock as of yet, but we have noticed that the uh, the European guys and the US distributors have received a couple of allocations here and there, which means we're probably not far behind. <laughs> So again, estimating possibly January, maybe even February. Okay. And there's a question here on the Home Assistant. Uh, so Home Assistant can talk to the Protect API, use the Protect cameras as a motion sensor or smart lights. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, we haven't tested that specific scenario, but uh, that's <laughs> very cool to know. Uh, William, I'll be reaching out to you directly after this as well. I'd like to understand how that's done. So I would really like to get the info. That's awesome to see that though. And then another question here from Matthew. So the doorbell, uh, that is, what is the delay time from someone pressing the button and then getting the alert and opening the app? Um, so from our testing, it's fairly short. Um, so it's, it's very much dependent on a whole bunch of variables, network environments, et cetera. Um, but from our own testing, it's the, the delay is pretty short. Um, I would say a couple of seconds typically. Um, yeah, it's about yeah. one or two seconds for the most part. Yeah. I haven't seen uh, massive delays on this. And there's a question here on the webinar itself. Uh, will this webinar be available to you later? Absolutely. Um, it will be emailed out automatically to everyone that's attended today, uh, as well as those that didn't attend. Okay, I think that seems to be all of the questions. You, uh, you guys are welcome to reach out to us uh, directly after this as well, if you have any additional questions, um, or if there's any questions that you didn't want to ask during this, uh, please do feel free to reach out to either myself uh, or your account manager, and they will pass it on to us respectively. Um, and I think with that, we can quickly do the uh, prize draw. So uh, yes, Chris, I've got that queued up, up on my side. Um, if 